Aquarius. Welcome to Pandora Astrology's monthly horoscope for February of 2022. We are the astrologers of Pandora Astrology. I'm Jamie Kale Miller. I'm in Berkeley, California. I'm Julia Mijas, joining in from San Francisco. Well, Aquarius, if this is your sun sign and not your rising sign, you are having your birthday month. So woohoo, go you. We're going to talk more about that in your horoscope, uh, that first house activity. And uh, you really might think about getting your annual birthday reading so that you can discover the themes of your solar return birthday chart and kick your year off right. And there's a link for that in the YouTube description below. Well, Ceres was retrograde for 14 plus weeks, and that really sucked. But now uh, it is direct again and going back through the span that it had retrograded through. So it's kind of cleaning up all of the financial messes um, that, that kind of came up during Ceres retrograde. And for you, this has landed in the fourth and fifth houses. Uh, the fourth house being home and family, the fifth house being fun and creativity and self-expression. So uh, if you have cleaned up your finances and cleaned up your habits and your self-care, especially in these life areas around the house and, um, and in ways that's, that's for the fourth house, you know, uh, around your home. And then for the fifth house, um, in ways that leave you feeling more vital, more alive, and more like yourself, then you've handled series retrograde pretty well. And if you want to find out more about it, you can find the video that we made about it. And that's in the January news playlist last month. You can find that on our YouTube channel, Pandora Astrology. Well, Julia, I know you've got some news for the Aquarians of the world about Mars, Mercury, and Venus. What's that stuff? Well, some good stuff indeed. Hey there, Aquarius, and happy birthday. Um, we'll start with Mars. Mars is the planet of action and activity. Wherever we have him, you know, he's in a different house usually every other month, is where we expend a lot of our energy, but also where we can run into conflict. Now, Mars is going to be in your 12th house all month. The 12th house is a very isolated place. It can be a spiritual place, and it's also known as the house of self-undoing. So it can be a place where we can sabotage ourselves a little because we all do that every now and then. Um, so with Mars in the 12th house, Mars being actions, you know, because the 12th house is so isolated, sometimes there can be a tendency to act behind people's back or not be very direct with our anger, being more passive aggressive. And since this is the house of self-sabotage, if you act behind people's back, it may end up blowing up in your face later. So try not to do that. The 12th house is a very spiritual and charitable place, though. So if you get yourself really involved in some type of cause that serves something higher than yourself, whether it's a political Political cause, getting involved at your church, temple, or mosque, whether that's doing a lot of meditation and yoga at home, wonderful transit for it. Mm -hmm. Then Mercury, the planet of communication and mentation, starts the month retrograde, also in your 12th house. Your 12th house is pretty busy this month, Aquarius. Um, and uh, Mercury in the 12th, again, those same things I was speaking about earlier apply here. Mercury in the 12th can try to hide its, its uh, thoughts and ideas a little bit more because Mercury represents your mind and the 12th is a very isolated place. Um, and while it's retrograde, um, this could be a time of reviewing and sort of going over uh, your spiritual and altruistic um, concerns in your life. Since the 12th house is the house of self-undoing, you might also be thinking back over situations where maybe you shot yourself in the foot and how you can do, how you can be better in the next situation. Mm -hmm. On February 3rd, Mercury goes direct and by mid-month in the 14th, it enters your house of self, the first house. And after, so basically for the second half of the month, you're going to be much more interested in sharing your thoughts with other people instead of keeping them to your to yourself. And Mercury in the first can be a wonderful transit for just articulating yourself better and making a, a good intellectual first impression on people. Now, Venus, um, she has just gone through a whole six week retrograde period and it just ended like on January 29th, which is great news for us all. So if you 
you've been having to deal with some uh, relationship review and issue over the past six weeks, that period is coming to an end. Um, but it will take a few weeks for, for Venus to start gaining some momentum going a little bit faster. And she's going to be spending the entire month also in your 12th house. So with Venus in the 12th, you know, wherever we find Venus is where we have some pleasure. Um, you could enjoy spending more time on your own instead of being super social going out there. Um, if you have a partner, then you might enjoy spending more time by only kind of one on one and not in a large, not in a large crowd, maybe spending more time at home. Um, and uh, Venus in the 12th house can be a time where you can be of service to your partner because the 12th house has a spiritual type of service to it versus the sixth house, which is more practical service, or your partner might find ways of, of being more altruistic and service oriented towards you too, which is very nice. Hmm, sweet. Um, and I want to add a couple of things uh, about the moons and a seasonal change. But before I even do that, I want to show you that uh, Juno starts the month uh, in the very end of Capricorn. And we spoke about Venus and Juno together in our video last month in January, where we talked about, you know, Venus retrograde and Juno direct and how those lined up because these are the two relationship goddesses right venus is love juno is marriage and um the the lovely news is that very early in the month right here around the first or second juno moves into your first house and so for you aquarius this is going to be a very social time this is going to be a month or two of um taking the lead socially, being the matchmaker, being the yenta, the one who connects the people that should know each other. So uh, take a look around your social circle and ask yourself, who needs to be introduced to who? Uh, because Juno is really favoring that for you right now. So to go back to January 31st, I know that this isn't actually in February, but it's actually the first moon of the month. And that's a new moon right here in your first house in Aquarius. We're calling this diligently cultivate the seeds of genius. It has a very Aquarian feel. It includes a square to Uranus, and it's a new moon, which always has to do with new beginnings. It falls right here in your first house. And so you need to look inside yourself for the seeds of genius, plant those, and, and really be watering them, shine sunlight on them, and grow the seeds of your genius. You know, lest they turn, you know, flower into something you know, maybe a little darker, like rebellion and reactivity out of, uh, you know, uh, the feeling that that your genius hasn't been noticed, right? So maybe it's time for your genius to come out and this can be the beginning of that. So then the other moon I want to tell you about is on the 16th and it's a full moon in Leo, which falls in your seventh house of partnership, right? There's that moon opposite the sun in Aquarius. Um, and this moon in Leo is very radiant, very expressive, very playful, kind of a party moon, really. Um, we're, but we're calling this one release addiction become radiant. And the reason is because of the involvement of the south node in Scorpio and the north node in Taurus with Ceres. Ceres and the North Node in Taurus are pulling us in the direction of healthy behaviors, healthy habits, holistic ways of being. And the South Node in Scorpio says, let go of old compulsions and addictions. Now, where you'll notice this landing, though, is the location of the full moon, which for you is that seventh house of partnership. So, so here's how to just put it all in one sentence. Let go of old compulsions and addictions in your career, 10th house. Embrace healthy habits and better ways of being in your home, 4th house. And notice the good results in all your relationships. Sounds pretty good to me. The last thing I want to tell you about is the seasonal change. And uh, you'll notice that over the course of the month, a lot of things begin the month here in your 12th house. A kind of stirring up the muddy waters, if you will. And that's really representative of your, um, your yearly mop-up period, you know, um, the, the last phase before your birthday where um, the old is, is falling away and the new is coming into existence. And it's kind of a muddy time. 
And a lot of those planets migrate into the first house where the attention is on you, particularly the sun in Aquarius here represents the, the spotlight of attention directly on you for your own growth and self-discovery. And, um, and then uh, over the course of the month, things are going to begin to move into the second house, which is Pisces. This is the seasonal change. And um, Pisces is a season of, um, of like, it's a kind of a womb-like season, if you will. It's like about the, the way that the land is wet and muddy and the seeds when planted in this land that is softening after the hard winter, the seeds planted in it can grow in the darkness and emerge as the spring comes on. Now, this is your second house. Wherever the sun goes, and we're going to see this happen, boom, there's the sun. It moves into Pisces, enters into your second house. Wherever the sun goes, we want to bring the spotlight of our high quality attention. Attention is like sunlight. It helps things to grow. The second house is your finances. So this is a time uh, during the sign of Pisces for you to put good attention on your finances, to not like space out on them or, um, you know, sort of, neg you know, benign neglect. Benign neglect can turn into malignant neglect pretty easily. Um, but to just pay good attention to your, uh, your finances and also have a view to uh, altruism and philanthropy. All right, well, we are done with all that good stuff. Hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Uh, point the people that you know that enjoy horoscopes to our horoscope page on our website, pandoraastrology.com. If you're interested in meeting with one of us one-on-one -on, -one on Zoom for a reading, you can find the services page on our website. And also there are classes as well. And until next time, we'll see you around the cosmos. Bye. Bye-bye.